Hey guys, in my last video, I demonstrated how I made a DRO sensor for my lathe Z-axis. In this video, I will show you how I made an enclosure for my display and boards. With the paramedics on standby and a generous supply of band-aids in the first aid kit, I started to build a sheet metal box 8 inches by 6 and a quarter inches by 3 inches or 203 millimeters by 159 millimeters by 76 millimeters deep. Using a framing square, I drew a 14 by 12 and a quarter inch or 355 by 311 millimeter rectangle on a piece of 20 gauge steel. Even though it is a bit difficult to cut, I use 20 gauge sheet metal because it is sturdy and I'm able to drill and tap holes that accept machine screws. I cut the rectangle with a pair of long tin steps. Next I use a carpenter's marking gauge tool to scratch a borderline 3 inches from the edge of the sheet metal. I then used a ruler to measure and mark the half inch tabs at both ends of the box. I marked each tab at 45 degrees and one half inch from their end. Then I carefully cut the waste sheet metal away. I bent the six and a quarter side of the box first. I used a sheet metal break for one bend then a couple of clamps, a flat bar, and a soft hammer to bend the opposite side just to show you that I did not really need a sheet metal break for this project. Next, I bent the two remaining ends with a pair of 1-2-3 blocks held in place with large C-clamps. I know what some of you are thinking. I should not be banging on 1-2-3 blocks. That is true. But these are inexpensive 1-2-3 blocks that I bought second hand and they were not harmed in the making of this video. That said, a suitably sized block of metal or hardwood would work just as well. A brass or steel hammer would have dented and scratched my sheet metal. I expect that a wood mallet would work just as well as a soft plastic hammer. With the bending completed, I measured and marked holes near the top edge of the box for rivets. I made a simple jig using a couple of short 2x4s held in a vise to hold my box firmly in place as I center punched and drilled each hole. Once the holes were drilled, I removed the box from the clamp, then opened up the holes by twisting my scratch awl in the holes to make it easier to insert a rivet through both pieces of sheet metal. After the box was riveted, I placed the sides of the box on my steel table, then lightly tapped down each rivet with my steel hammer to draw the sheet metal closer together. With the box made, I started making the lid. I measured the finished dimensions of the box, added an eighth of an inch to the length and width, then added one inch to make flanges for the lid. Using a framing square, I marked out a rectangle, then used a marking gauge to scratch a half inch borderline inside the outer edge of the rectangle. I then cut away the half inch corner waste using a pair of snips. Before I bent the sheet metal, I laid out and drilled holes to mount my LCD displays. I drilled a couple of large holes to be able to start my tin snips. I also drilled a hole in each corner to form a tight radius corner. I recommend skipping this step. It did not work out well for me. It was more of a nuisance. I started cutting out the rectangular hole with red and green aviation snips. When I finished, I placed a sheet metal back in my 2x4 jig, then filed away the fish hooks and crooked edges. I also filed away any sharp edges on the lid. I made sure that the LCD displays fit into the holes. My next step was to bend the half inch sheet metal flange edges. Tapping the flanges with a soft hammer against one, two, three blocks to form 90 degree bends. To secure the lid to the box, I popped two 532nd holes into the flange on opposite sides. Put the lid on the box, traced the locations, 
then drilled and tapped 632 holes. Next, I used some rubber roofing material to act as a shock mount and to prevent the LCD display pins from shorting out against the lid. I trimmed these pins shorter as an added precaution. I mounted the reset push buttons and the LCD displays. Now it was time to drill the holes for my Arduino boards. I normally use brass or nylon standoffs to mount my electronic projects, but I did not have any 3mm standoffs to mount my Arduino boards. I ordered some brass standoffs, but they did not arrive in time for this project. What I used instead was a couple of 3 8 inch or 9.5 millimeter wood slabs. I placed the slabs into the bottom of the box, laid my Arduino boards on them in a convenient location, then traced the Arduino's long edges on the slabs. I removed the Arduino's, marked the edges of the wood slabs on the bottom of my box, then drilled four 532 mounting holes. I placed the slabs on a flat surface, supported them with 20 gauge sheet metal to allow for the thickness of my box bottom. Then I placed one Arduino on the wooden slabs. Next I created a template by tracing the outline of the Arduino's connectors onto a piece of thin cardboard. I cut out the outline with a sharp knife. I placed one slab up against the side of my box and centered it to the box. I matched up the pencil lines on the slab to the pencil lines on the cardboard, then traced all the electrical connectors. I drilled and filed holes in my box until the Arduino's electrical connectors fit properly through the holes. Next, I drilled two holes in the box to allow me to connect my encoder wires to my boards. Later, I inserted plastic grommets to prevent the wire insulation from being cut by the sheet metal. Before assembling, I gave my box and lid a fresh coat of paint. Then I secured my wood slabs to my box using small metal screws. Secured my Arduinos to the wood slabs gently using two very tiny sheet metal screws. And finally, inserted screws and nuts to hold the LCDs in place. That is how I laid out, cut, bent, and drilled some sheet metal to form a box that holds my electronics. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please hit the like button and subscribe. In my next video, I will show you how I wire the DRO and I will explain the Arduino sketch that contains specific instructions to make our DRO work properly. Thanks for watching.